Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Tuesday night. It's uh, it's a few minutes after eight. Normally, I'm uh, filming this at seven, but this little guy right here, our baseball star, had his last baseball game of the season, and I wasn't about to miss that because Ben is the all-star second baseman, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, I just I try to be a, a good dad, uh, you know, to, to support my kids and yeah, he had his final baseball game tonight, so um, good job, good job, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll kick it off here a little late. Um, I hope you're doing well. I hope that you have enjoyed this series, right? Now, as I, as I look at myself in the camera, I can see I'm, you know, a little unshaven, my hair is a little unkempt, and, you know, uh, but that's just life, right? That's just life. In the midst of um, summer and COVID and, you know, five kids around, you know, that's just life. We got to, you know, we, we got to deal with that. So here we are on a Tuesday evening for our Bible study series, Praying with the Bible in Uncertain Times. Um, this is our last session. I, I hope that, oh, you got another one of the kids back here. Um so, uh, you know, I hope that this has been beneficial for you. I hope that you have really dived, is that the proper verb, dove? Uh, you have uh, immersed yourself in these passages that I have recommended over the course of these weeks. We've already done nine weeks. This is week 10. And man, um, I'm sure you're ready for a break. I'm sure you're ready to hear, you know, or not hear Derek talk to you about the Bible for a little while. But um, I am glad that you have... No, please don't. Excuse me. Um, I am glad that you have engaged, uh, you know, uh, whether it be just through Facebook or whether it be uh, emailing me or whether it be through the Saturday morning video conferences. Um, whatever way you've engaged, I am, I am glad that you have chosen to engage. And I see a few more of you popping on now, and that's wonderful to see these names. And I do hope that I do hope that you will contact me either through my website or through email or through the social media um, in the coming week about how this whole series has impacted you, what you've gained out of it, and um, you know, because because I just want to know that the things that I say are doing some good in the world, right? And that's uh, that's what a lot of us want. So. Um, Again, you can find all of this. If you uh, missed any of the previous nine weeks, you can find it all on my website, DerekRoddy.com, and then uh, hit the events tab, and then there's you know a couple drop-down boxes or whatever, and you can find it really easily. Um, or they're all on social media, of course. So, but I do hope that you will tell a friend, right? Tell somebody if this has been powerful for you, if it has been effective for you, okay? So with that, I'm not going to spend as much time making announcements and, and delaying as usual because I want I want to get you on your way. We're already more than an hour past what we normally would be. So um, I, I just want to dive in. I want to do this last um, the, this last reflection here and uh, and get you guys on your way praying with these passages. And that's again, that's the key. I want you praying with the Bible. The Bible is a source of hope and it's a source of encouragement. So I hope that you will find hope. I hope that you will find encouragement and I hope that you'll share with me the hope and encouragement that you receive. But most importantly, I hope that you'll share it with others in your life, whether it be your spouses, whether it be your coworkers, whether it be your your parents, whether it be your your neighbors, whoever it is. I want you to share the hope and encouragement that the Lord wants all of us to, to experience, okay? So here we go. I've got two passages for you tonight. The first is from Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 18 and following. So verses 18 to the end of the chapter. Now this passage, there are so many people I have heard over the years say, oh, my favorite, my favorite verse in the whole Bible is Romans chapter 8, verse 28. So let me just go ahead and read Romans 8, 28. It says... We know that in everything, God works for good with those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. Now, I'm pointing at every one of you who is on this video tonight. I'm pointing at myself. We are all called according to the purpose of God. 
Every one of us, right? Especially if we are baptized individuals, we are called according to the purpose of God. So this verse is very powerful, right? We know that all things work out for good. But this is, this is just one verse in this whole very powerful passage, right? And, and Paul starts in verse 18 of this passage. And he says, well, of course, later he's going to say all things work out for good. But he starts in a specific place. He starts by saying, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. So he's making this this contrast between suffering and glory, right? And he promises, just like Jesus promised, that suffering is going to come our way. If we are disciples of Jesus Christ, we will suffer. There's no doubt about it, right? And it might be a very personal thing. It might be a, a suffering within a relationship. It might be something that, uh, you know, tragic that happens to a child. Um, and, and then we've got the, the bigger picture sufferings that many of us are going through right now with uh, the, the COVID, right? We know, probably all of us know, uh, somebody who has contracted this novel coronavirus. Um, and then there's the whole civil unrest related to, um, you know, the questions of racism and police brutality and all that. All of those create suffering within us individually and within our social circles. And you know what? We just have to realize that as 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 human beings, that's going to happen. But it's the hope of Jesus Christ that fills that and allows us to make it through and spread good news to others even during those times, okay? And then Paul says, even those sufferings, no matter if they're coming, even those sufferings are not in comparison to the glory that awaits us, right? There is a glory that awaits us that is far better than anything we can imagine. We call this heaven, right? Now, heaven, that's a whole detailed theological concept that I'm not planning to go into in a whole lot of detail tonight because we could be here forever. We could be here for 10 more weeks. Um, but heaven, just the, the, the very basic definition, is the fulfillment of your deepest longings. Every deep longing that you have in your life will be fulfilled by God if you allow him to and if you follow his ways. And that's the glory that St. Paul is referring to here. Okay, so again, I'm not going to spend time going through each of these verses because we'd be here for way too long, but I want to flip over toward the end of the chapter, um, verses 31 and following, right? Verses 31 and following are, uh, are, are really powerful here because Paul goes on to say, what shall we say to this, right? If God is for us, who can be against us, right? And it's going to seem a lot of times like a lot of things are going against us. The world's going against us. Our coworkers are going against us. Sometimes even our family, our spouses, our children are going against us. But but Paul says, if God is for us, who can be against us, right? And then he goes on to say, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also give us all things with him? God is such a generous giver. Folks, God will not be outgiven, and God will give you exactly the things that will bring you to your fullness. And he's already given you and all of us the perfect gift in his son, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. Okay, um, and then he goes on, right? Who shall bring any charge against us? Is Jesus Christ who died, who was risen from the dead? And then he says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Nothing is going to separate us from the love of God should we not allow it to. He is not going to allow things to separate us from his love. Only we can do that. We can start focusing on we can start focusing on ourselves. We can start focusing on our bank accounts. We can start focusing on um, thinking that every other person who's out there who doesn't agree with us is the problem, right? But the thing we have to realize is that in humility, we have to realize that the 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 biggest problem is right in here, right? And we need to let the Lord work on this first before we start 
you know, proclaiming that so and so is is wrong, right? So so that's a that's a really important message that Paul has for us to navigate uncertain times, right? Nothing is going to separate us from the love of Christ if in humility we will allow him to fill us first and transform us first. And and then yes, we can work with others, not against others. We can work with others for the transformations of social, you know, units and, you know, um, governments and things like that, right? Okay, so that's Romans chapter 8. And then the last passage that I have for you in this, uh, in this series is uh, from Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Now, Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9 is my absolute favorite passage in the Bible. This comes right before that. I'm not going to go into that passage tonight. Um, maybe another time, right? So he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Be joyful, people. Be joyful, right? Frederick Nietzsche uh, was a, a great... I won't say great. He was a well-known secular philosopher. And he said this. He said, you know what would make Christianity much more convincing? If Christians were more joyful, right? We have, I mean, even Pope Francis talked about, you know, we need to get rid of sourpuss Christians. Yeah, because sourpuss isn't part of the definition of Christianity. But joy is, right? And Paul's saying that here. Rejoice in the Lord always. And then he doubles it up because he's a good he's a good Jew, right? So anytime Jews say something once and then say it again, they're trying to kind of underscore it, bold type on Microsoft Word, underlined, italicized, right? Pay attention to this. He says, rejoice, be people of joy, right? And then in verse 6, he says, have no anxiety about anything. And I spoke a few weeks back about the reasons for anxiety in our lives and in our culture. And ultimately, it's because we are lacking hope, right? We need hope in order to overcome anxiety. So when he says, have no anxiety in you about anything, he also means on the positive side of that, be people of hope, right? Find the hope that the Lord wants to give you. And where do we find hope? Here he says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Prayer, right? Prayer is a source of hope because, as we just saw in Romans chapter 8, right? God is the giver of every good gift. If we pray and we ask him, we have the right, we have the need, and, and it automatically comes that we hope that he is going to fill those needs, okay? And then finally... And he says, if you do this, Paul says, if you do this, in chapter 4, verse 7 of Philippians, he says, and if you do this, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What else do we want in this life but peace, right? With COVID going on, with civil unrest, with people losing their jobs with family members and, and loved ones getting sick and, and perhaps even losing their lives, right? We can. It's easy to have anxiety. It's hard to find peace. And so how do we, how do we find that peace, right? It's only found in the Lord. It's only found in the Lord. But one of the things that I would point you to in this passage is he uses the word in Greek. It's translated into English as thanksgiving. But in Greek, it's Eucharistia, Eucharistia. And the greatest source of our hope as Christians is in the Eucharist. It's in the Eucharist uh, that we celebrate each week, okay? Now, um, so I wish you that peace that, that you're all looking for. And I wish that, I hope, that, and I desire that you would come to find that peace, especially in the Eucharist, especially by partaking in the Eucharist. If you're not Catholic and you're watching this, I encourage you to consider the Eucharist. Consider the sacramental life of the church, especially the Mass, right? If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I'll be, I love questions. I love answering questions. But I pray for each of you that you will find that peace, okay? You will find that peace that the Lord wants for you and that will fill your lives and that will bring you to the ultimate happiness that God intends for you, okay? Uh, the last thing I want to mention on this note of, of peace, 
right? The final, the epilogue, the, the conclusion of my book is about joy and peace as the two distinctive markers of Christian conversion. When we enter into this ongoing process of conversion that should take our whole lives, that will take our whole lives, where does it bring us? It brings us to joy and peace, right? So I would like to ask you, if you haven't already gone to, to get a copy of my book um, and you have found this series or any one of these videos helpful, you're going to find so much more stuff in my book, and I'm just thinking I, I had a copy of it that I was going to hold up and show to you, but I left it over on my desk. So, um, But you can find it very easily. It's on my website, DerekRoddy.com, or you can find it on Amazon, or you can find it on the Our Sunday Visitor um, store online, right? Um, you can find it at your local Catholic bookstore. The, the title is A Life of Conversion. Oh, I have just been brought a copy. Thank you, dear. Right? She's my Vanna White. She is absolutely my Vanna White. A life of conversion, and I know it's backwards on the video because, right, that's how this thing works. Um, meeting Christ in the Gospels, right? So we've been praying through the Bible, and this shows you how to do a process called Lexio Divina, divine reading, that will help you to encounter Jesus Christ in the Gospels, the, the portion of Scripture that is about Him. So if you haven't already gotten a, a copy of the book, I really, really, really suggest that you, you do that so that you can continue unpacking these beautiful things that we've unpacked for 10 weeks. I'd like to sell a million copies of this, not so I can get rich, but so that you and all the people who read it will know the beauty of the life of conversion, right? So please, go get the book. And when you do, when you do, after you read it, I would beg you to please leave a res review on Amazon.com. Even if you don't buy it from Amazon.com, you can still leave a review. All you need is an Amazon.com account, okay? So please, go get the book, do yourself a favor, uh, learn a little more about the life of ongoing conversion and, and Lexio Divina, and, um, and, and let me know how it goes. Let me know what the Lord is doing in your life through praying with the Gospels, okay, and, and praying with the Bible, right? Now, I just realized that we forgot to pray at the beginning, so I want to pray at the end and then send you guys on your way. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for these 10 weeks that we have had together to pray with the Bible to help us find hope and encouragement during these uncertain times that we're facing in our own lives individually and in our communities and in our nation and in our world. And uh, Lord, I just pray for, I pray for every person who has watched this video, whether it be live or, or recorded after, I pray that they would know the great joy and the great peace that you have for them, that you would help them overcome all anxiety by bringing them to hope right? Real hope in Jesus Christ. So, Lord, bless them, bless their families, and um, bless them as they enter into the life of conversion and grow closer to you each and every day. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Again, I invite you to contact me through my website. I look forward to it, right? Um, we'll have the Saturday morning uh, video conference that, that you can share with me what, uh, what the Lord's doing in your life through these passages. But if you want to be a part of that, I need you to email me so that I can email you the web link for that video conference. So uh, with that, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to get dinner and get you guys on your way. Um, so I, I'm glad that you have joined me and know that you are in my prayers as you pray with the Bible through uncertain times and as you enter into a life of ongoing conversion. God bless you.